Hello, everyone, and welcome. Happy Thursday morning as we're recording this on the eve of the College World Series Finals rematch. My name is Bryce Good alongside Glenn West, and we welcome you here into the Go 24-7 pod, whether you're watching this on YouTube or you're listening to it uh, through the airwaves, whether that's on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you may be getting this. Glenn, it, it's a big weekend. We teased this yesterday in our spring football podcast Baseball has said, uh, yeah, we're going to schedule – we're going to have Florida. SEC said, yeah, let's just send Florida down there. Uh, same weekend. It's not like anything else is going to be going on. You know, the women's basketball team's not hosting the NCAA tournament. Um, spring football's not going on. But let, let's put this one down there. So I expect a packed-out Alex Box Stadium this weekend, Friday through Sunday, Glenn. We're going to get into some of the nitty-gritty of this matchup. But just going to tell me – I know you weren't able to be at the game – on Tuesday, what is uh, what's the temperature? How, how are you feeling? Uh, hot or cold on this LSU team? Struggled last week in Starkville, um, right at the ship, maybe uh, in a midweek game, a game they needed to really things go right for them. How are you feeling heading into this uh, matchup against Florida? Yeah, I'll, I'll split it down the middle. I'll go lukewarm uh, on on how I'm feeling going into this one. I think there's um, th- look, there's some things that you want to see from this team that you didn't see last weekend against Mississippi State, and you know they did a really nice job against Louisiana Tech. Uh, and I believe they run ruled them. Uh, I was yes, you know, I was at the basketball game, uh, and that was a whole different kind of infuriating uh, experience, but uh, that, you know, it was, um, you know, I, I just, I, I think that the baseball team here, you, you really are just hoping to see uh, this pitching staff get back on track. I mean, I, I do think that um, we'll, we'll get a good sense of if last weekend was an aberration kind of week, or if it was maybe a sign of, just a not things to come, but just another sign that maybe this we we we, we maybe have overvalued the, the pitching. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we'll we'll get a good sense of that this weekend because I do think Florida is is better than their record shows. I, I mean, they're still a top ten team. They're still, uh, I think, probably one of the favorites to 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 get into Omaha and make another run. And they've got a really uh, you know solid nucleus offensively that I think is really going to be able to test these pitchers. And you know, I just. Yeah. We're going to be talking with Jay Johnson here. Uh, we're recording this before we get a chance to talk to him before we uh, before previewing the matchup. But I would imagine that he wants to see a lot of the same things. I think he'd like to see these uh, pitchers just come out and, and, and throw some strikes and, and and maybe get ahead in counts. You know, I think that was a, a problem against Mississippi State. Not only were they getting hit early in counts, but they were also getting behind in counts as well. Um, yeah. And you know, when you when you behind in counts. It, Good teams will make you pay for it. Um, when you when you leave a, a hanging breaking ball or a fastball over the plate or something, you know, most most hitters in the SEC will will take advantage of that. And so, I do think it's you know really important for this pitching staff to have a good weekend. You know, Luke Holman. Uh, uh, again, I'm not worried about Holman. I'm not worried about Jump yet. I'm not. Uh, I'm not even really worried about Thatcher Hurd because I do think that Thatcher Hurd for two weeks in a row there kind of showed you what his potential can be as a starter and, you know, yeah. things did not go well for him on Sunday. Jay Johnson even said that in the Monday kind of presser after the weekend that, look, I mean, we, we, we need more out of him. We need more out of a lot of these bullpen guys. Um, but, you know, I, I do think that that's probably where my central focus is going to lie. It's just uh, where this pitching staff ends up, you know, after this weekend, I, I, I do think that you're going to have to really rely heavily on those guys because, you know, as we've seen, this offense has been very up and down. Uh, I think it's uh, a really, really good sign that Tommy White is just continuing to, to do his thing at the plate. I mean, four home runs in the last four games um, really seems to be putting it together defensively as well. I know he, I think he had an error in that, that midweek game uh, against mm-hmm. Louisiana Tech, but uh, I'm, I'm not putting much stock in that. I'm going to try to take more of the, the Mississippi State route and, and just the three games showing that he had – uh, in Starkville as, as hopefully things sign of things, uh, things to come. So uh, really like what Tommy's doing at the plate. I think, you know, I think you got to rely on your veterans here in a, in a rematch like this. And, you know, we talked about him a little bit, but I think this is the perfect weekend for a guy like Josh Pearson to get going. Um, you know, he was obviously a huge part of what you did last year and making it to, to Omaha and, and certainly in Omaha, he had some big moments against Florida and against Wake Forest, but, um, I, I think they just they need him to get going and they need some stability out there in the outfield. I mean, they just they keep rotating guys in and out of the lineup. And um, if they can get one or two of these guys to really just 
establish their role. And, and, and I, I think that you're in a much better spot because, you know, when you're, when you're one of these players, you know, four five, six guys that they're rotating in and out, like, it's just hard to catch a rhythm. You know, you, if you have yeah. a one for four day at the plate or an zero for five day at the plate, you don't know if that opportunity is coming for you the next day. I think if you're able to establish uh, some kind of consistency in the outfield, that's something that I think they, they'd like to be able to do. Uh, then, then you've, you've got a really good chance here of, of, uh, of getting back to 500 or, uh, you know, winning this series uh, against the Gators. You take a look game by game of what this series could look like. You mentioned Luke Coleman, um, if, if everything holds for Florida like it did last weekend. And you mentioned uh, midweek's been their kind of their kryptonite. Like, it hasn't been good for them. Uh, but they took two out of three against Texas A&M, a top 10 team that last yeah. weekend. Like, this is still a very, very good team, a well-coached team. Um, Cade Fisher, who has – um, struggled a little bit this season, seven plus ERA, uh, 22 runs on 28 hits in 22 innings, uh, a little over 22 innings, that is. So you have a guy that, you know, uh, has struggled a lot, like, you know, a guy like Thatcher Hurd has in his, his time. It's an opportunity for Florida to ride the ship in that Friday game. Uh, Gage Jump, Liam Peterson are kind of the two guys that maybe match up on Saturday night's game. Uh, that's going to be something that's very, very interesting. Peterson, another guy who started five games, he's one and two, 7.5 ERA. Um, he has struck out 22, though, in 18 innings of work, while he's also given up 15 runs. It kind of feels like a high risk, high reward there uh, for Florida. And then I think the one that we're all going to be watching, and, I mean, we're going to watch all three of them, but Jack Caglione is going to be pitching inside Alex Box Stadium on Sunday. That's the projected rotation. Uh, he has been very, very good this year. Uh, just around uh, five runs on just nine hits in over 20-plus innings this yeah. season. So you talk about the pitching matchups, Glenn, and we know what Caglione can do with a bat. He has been hot. I went back and I was looking at their midweek games and what they've been able to do. Let, let's let's rattle this off. And LSU fans, you might you might scoff at this. It's okay. They lost to Jacksonville seven to six earlier this week. Uh, the week before they played Texas A and M, they lost to Florida State, respectable opponent, top twenty five opponent there in Florida State. Um, they've lost to UCF in a midweek. They have lost to Stetson in a midweek. Look, midweek games can be the kryptonite. LSU fans know that. The Tigers have lost you know, uh, some midweek games in years prior. It does not define your season. But, Glenn, you know, we talk about offense. We talk about, you know, and, and I'm going to get into this here in a second. We talk about, you know, this pitching staff for both sides. The numbers might be inflated. It's still two uber-talented pitching staffs. My keys, my biggest key, and I'll start it here with you, is I think LSU does, you know, this is not a must-win series. This doesn't determine if you're going to Omaha. It's a good litmus test. These first two guys, you got to jump on them quick. And you got to jump on Jack Caglione quick. The offense has to start quickly. It's something they were able to do against Louisiana Tech. I think doing it against a higher-profile opponent would ease some of the concern of fans. Yeah, and look, they jumped out on Mississippi State in, the, in two of those three yeah. games too. I mean, uh, or, yeah, I believe it was the Friday game. They jumped out three nothing on them, and then from really the fourth inning on, they just weren't able to generate any kind of offense. And you know, they they jumped on them again on Saturday. They were able to hold on uh, there at the end. Um, I, I just I, I just keep coming back to the consistency element of this. I mean, we've seen this offense put up big mm -hmm. crooked numbers and in innings. Um, you know, at a time, but we haven't been able to see them do it as consistently as I think Jay Johnson would like, as as they would like. Um, like they 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 have the, I believe they scored five runs in two innings in the Sunday game against Mississippi State, and then the other seven they really were kind of non-competitive, and and yeah. that's, I mean, you, you've got to find some kind of balance there. I mean, I'm not saying you got to go out there and score two runs every every inning, or, uh, but if you if you can get some consistent pressure on these pitchers and, and get guys in scoring position, get guys on base, drive up pitch counts. Um, that all goes towards winning baseball. And that has been kind of the hallmark of this offense for the last couple of years is that they've been able to get uh, starting pitchers out earlier in their outings than they probably would have liked. And mm -hmm. they just, they've just been really consistent in that element of it. And this, this season has just not been that. I mean, they've they've had some really good moments. I mean, the the Houston series uh, in, in Houston was was really, uh, I think, probably a bright spot for the offense and for this this uh, 
this team. Uh, they, they'd like to probably try to get back to that, but um, there's there's just a lot I think it's still up in the air. I mean, like we we, we want to see Paxton Kling get it together at the plate. He's he's in a super funk right now, and there's no yeah. no way around that. And I think they they've got to get him going a little bit. I believe he had a double in that game earlier this week. Maybe that was the start of uh, you know him showing a little bit more consistency at the plate, but. Um, they've got to they've got to cut down on the strikeouts. They've got to you know w- one of the other things they've really shown that they can do this year uh, is uh, you know um, get guys in scoring position and and by doing that is you know drawing free passes via the walk and hit by pitch. They've been pretty good at that um, throughout the, the 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 regular season so far. Uh, but they got to get those guys in. They've got to have Jared Jones be able to drive those guys in. They've got to have Tommy White continue to do what he's doing right now and drive those guys in. Um, so finding finding that element, unlocking that piece offensively, I think is what's really going to help. And if they can do that, then I, I think the sky's the limit for this team still. I mean, like they've, they've got a legit pitching staff. And I, I do think yeah. that we can't. Um, you know, we, we take the, the Mississippi State series with a grain of salt, but also with the understanding that the first, you know, five weeks of the season count too, and they were pretty dominant in that stretch. And uh, you'd like to see that carry over here to conference play. Um, I think this will be a big, like you said, litmus test to see kind of what uh, these pitchers and, and certainly this this offense can 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 try to do and, and get back to some more consistency. But um, this is the this is as good a test as they're going to face all season at home. Um, you know, I know they have uh, I believe it's Vanderbilt coming in here in a couple weeks, but like they this is this is a this is an Omaha caliber team and, and yeah. uh, an opponent that you know absolutely expects to be hosting in the postseason and how well she responds in that environment you know with all your crowd behind you uh i think it's going to be really important for this group another little tidbit that jay johnson mentioned just overall defensively they've got to play better he still believes this is a solid defensive team but you're facing a team in florida that averages 8.3 runs per game they hit exactly 300 uh glenn they have five different guys batting over 300 entering this weekend and uh four guys who have hit seven plus homers um, another thing is they play solid defense. They're sixth in the country in fielding percentage, 985. I mean, this is a Gators team that, like you said, I think the best way to describe them is when you really dig inside the numbers, it's a better team than that 12-8 and eight record indicates. LSU, and it might sound too simple, but Jay Johnson has said it. Hayden Dravinsky said it. Justin Lohr said it on Tuesday. We just have to be better. Like, what happened in Starkville is just not the standard. And that's kind of what I wrote about on Monday was – it's not the standard you want to you kind of want to live up to. It's not the standard of LSU baseball. And while Mississippi State might be a better team uh, than maybe people, you know, the prognosticators thought entering the season, LSU expects more. They demand more. And like yeah. you said, you're facing a team where you can't really make the mistakes. And I wanted to get this from you. One of the calling cards has been people keep trying to com- you know compare to last season. Well, we had this last year. I just think one of the things we saw in Starkville and Look, you might see it again this week, and it might take a couple of series to figure this out. Is you have guys that maybe their their status, their their year, their grade, or however you want to put it, uh, says sophomore or junior, but they haven't necessarily played a ton of big time games to understand that. And the only way that you work through those things is experience and learning out there on the field. How much do you think that kind of attributes the fact of like, yeah, you've got some guys with experience, but you have guys that have never really been in this spot in this position, even though the talent is there. Yeah, I mean, look, Brady Neal, you know, played the first three or four weeks in SEC play last year, got a good taste of it. Um, but then, you know, he got hurt and he didn't play a whole lot down the stretch or he didn't play it all down the stretch. I didn't mean to say yeah. that. But uh, then you, you had, you know, Jacob Jones. He was kind of your starter to begin SEC play. Um, and, and he, you know, fell out of the rotation. Paxton Kling was the guy that was starting for you uh, early in the season last year, and he fell out of the rotation. So, uh, a lot of these guys don't have, like you mentioned, they, they don't have a lot of the SEC experience, which is why I do think guys like, you know, Mac Bingham and uh, you know, Josh Pearson, Hayden Travinsky, uh, even Alex Malazzo. I think all these guys are going to have to kind of, you know, pick up, pick it up for, from a veteran's perspective. And look, I, I do think that there are some things that you can work around here. Like I, I do think the, mm-hmm. the, the ability to get on base. Like I, I feel like I'm writing every after every game recap, 
you know, the LSU went like three for 21 or one for 11 and runners in scoring position and runners on base. Like that's yeah. a lot of opportunities that you're getting on in scoring position and on base. You, you just, you've got to be able to get those guys in a little bit more consistently. And uh, I think once LSU figures that out, they're going to be as dangerous a team in the SEC uh, as, as any. And, and I, I just, I, I think that there's, uh, you know, this, this this guy is not falling yet on this season, and and this is going to be a really really big important series to seeing uh, what kind of improvements can be made at the plate. Uh, you mentioned defensively, they had a six error weekend last weekend. Uh, I think they had a couple more uh, against Louisiana Tech. Um, you'd like to see the defense get cleaned up uh, quite a bit this this weekend if they can play clean defense behind their pitchers. That certainly will. Uh, we'll keep those those pitch counts down. We'll keep Florida from scoring, and uh, but it's it's going to be tough. Like I mean, Florida's got you mentioned Jack Caglione. I mean, he's batting four fourteen <laughs> with with nine home runs, and you know he's walked and he's struck out. But even guys like Ty Evans last year, he was a big big winner in in Omaha for them. He had, I think he had five home runs in Omaha last year for for Florida. He's really improved in his neck and in, uh, in, in kind of his development. You know, you got so many different guys back from that team last year, just m- much like LSU that um, maybe didn't get the everyday experience that they, that they, they would have liked, but they saw how it was done. And, and I think yeah. LSU is in a very similar situation from, from last year's team. And I think that they, they have the veterans on this team to be able to handle that. And, you know, I'm going to be interested to see kind of what Johnson and these players say today, um, you know, we're, I'm sure they're going to be asked a ton about this rematch and just kind of you know, their yeah. feelings on it. But, um, you know, the, 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 the more of the nitty gritty stuff here is that you got to you've got to unlock something offensively at the plate in terms of just consistently being able to drive guys in pitching side. You know, I think you just you got to continue to throw strikes and you, you've mm-hmm. got to play clean defense behind them. And I think LSU will like the results if they're able to be a little bit more consistent in all those areas. You know, we mentioned fielding percentage. LSU uh, is not near the top in that fielding percentage. They're 73rd in the country, 8th in the SEC with a 974 fielding percentage. Um, And then you mentioned Florida, number six, number one in the SEC. You talked about hitting with runners in scoring position, Glenn. And look, uh, everyone's going to try to nitpick every little thing that happens with this program. I get that. It's a high-profile program. The standard is up here of what you want to accomplish. Even in an 11-to-1 win, Glenn, LSU just hit three for 11 with runners in scoring position against Louisiana Tech on Tuesday. Uh, They did a lot of it with the long ball, which is okay. Uh, I think the worry is if you fall in love with a long ball, the ability to string one, two, three, four hits together consecutively, that's what wins you a championship. And you saw that in Omaha last year. That's what LSU was able to do. If you can find a way to get back to that, uh, it's huge. Now, while they only went three for 11 with runners in scoring position, with runners on, they were seven of 18. So a lot of those guys were scoring on extra base hits. You yeah. know, maybe they're at first and they come all the way around to score. I just think that's one of my key things is can you string together one, two, three, four hits and, and, and build a rally instead of using the long ball, you know, exclusively? And then defense, man. Like I know we said it earlier, you just got to play solid defense. That error on Tommy White, Jay Johnson said, spoke to it a little bit um, as he was kind of leaving on camera. Someone threw in a last second question. He said, that's an example of Tommy just trying to do too much. Uh, several times in that game against Louisiana Tech, Tommy was kind of cutting off Michael Braswell uh, at shortstop where Braswell had the better look. Uh, Tommy was going to his left and uh, he, he did it a couple times in his, in his favor, you know, and to give him credit, but uh, he, he might've done a little too much trying to play. Tom, Tommy's just trying to show off the versatility. That's what it was trying to, trying to show off, I guess, some defensive versatility coming off that high. Yeah, that he was, I'd, uh, I'd be playing ball. with a pretty big head too. After the weekend I had in Starkville <laughs> from, from a defensive perspective, glove and everything and making some really great plays and hitting balls over the fence every game. I mean, I, I would be that way too. So, you know, look, I, I think you make a great point there about the long ball. Can't fall in love with it. And even in the game they won last Saturday uh, in Starkville, I believe they had three or four home runs in that game. And that's how they generated most of their offense. Um, yeah. But like I also said, they didn't score in seven of those nine innings either. Or, or I think or maybe it was six of those nine or something like that. I mean, like it's just 
you can you can only go too far with the long ball and with the extra base hits. I think you just you've got to be able to show consistency and moving the offense through contact, through getting and I, I think that's when LSU's been at their best this year. And Jay Johnson said that a number of times too is they've been at their best when they've been able to kind of drive um, you know, drive balls, you know, hard line drives and grounders up the middle and into the uh, weak spots of the outfield and and, and kind of just use their speed and their athleticism to their advantage and getting guys home. So uh, we'll see. Um, you know, I'm excited to see kind of what the, the atmosphere is like tomorrow, uh, because, you know, especially with uh, the NCAA tournament game, maybe you won't get quite as big a crowd tomorrow um, on Friday for the Friday game. Um just because you know the women are going to be playing, and um, but you know same time they, they might get a, I think it's still going to be a really good showing, and mm-hmm. uh, you know national championship rematch is going to get all the juices flowing, and I'm sure LSU will be on top of it in terms of being prepared to play and ready for 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 this uh, for this for this three game series. Hayden Travinsky said, uh, asked him a question, how excited he goes. This is what you come to LSU to play for. Uh, he goes, I love this. I fell in love with this aspect. And he said he's really excited for some of these guys to experience Alex Box Stadium at full bore. Uh, Going to be a lot of fun. Uh, if you had the chance to attend, hey, make sure you make sure you get those tickets. The aftermarket t- t- ticket prices are ridiculous, um, but, you know, that's expected. Uh, it's going to be a fun, fun weekend in Baton Rouge. LSU takes on Florida. Going to be a fun one this weekend. We'll be back uh, Sunday or Monday to kind of recap what happened, hopefully. Good news. For Jay Johnson and the Tigers. This has been another episode of the Go 24-7 podcast.